let's add virtual here also so what virtual does here it allows NT framework to lazy load those two so what is lazy load uh, it basically um, yeah, defer the initialization of any uh, field, uh, field until it's absolutely necessary and this is um, more efficient uh, if it's used properly and we are going to talk more about uh, the virtual or and empty framework uh, lazy load and eager load in another tutorial but so now let's go ahead and drop our database because we have made some changes to our uh, database here validation rules so let's put here three and build and let's run it and let's browse to store so as you can see here there is no any there's nothing in our category so let's add just some data to go server explorer and should so entities let's see tables so here for our categories let's just edit this one So let's browse to store manager, store manager, and if, and if we go here into details, we can back to list, we, if we create a new here, and for price if we like enter like zero, so here price must be between 0 0.1 and 100, and if we like then enter anything else, we, we have an item title is required for the title here. Uh, and if we enter like so, something like uh, like an, a number here, we so the field price must be a number. As you can see, it already fulfilled our uh, validation rules. So if we here enter something reasonable, so let's see, um, let's see like uh, a new land, and price to be three, item like whatever, create. And it's created our uh, new lamp here so now anyone can can I enter to store manager and edit delete uh, or show details of our store and that's not good so you want uh, some specific people to be able to enter the store manager controller but just to make it easier for us to uh, to navigate here I'm going to add a store and store manager uh, for to our website so go ahead into our shared now it's i should have done this like before but i just wanted you to get used to the uh, typing of the, the urls let's just copy here and for here let's make it store and to enter the index page and call it store so, so here this specific this specifies the store controller, get into the index method, and show the link to be named store. So let's make another one for action for a store manager. So let's copy here and store the name of the controller here we have store manager. And to enter the and here to be management so let's go ahead and build and run this yeah so edit store manager to be able to navigate easily so now let's go ahead and add the uh, authorization for our store manager here so let's make the here let's put a validation to be authorized uh, rules uh, users to be like uh, Ali, for example, at Gmail. So, um, so let's build this. 
so only this user can can go can get into the uh, website uh, for uh, editing deleting or creating a new new thing so let's register a new user here so for the email make it uh, ali at gmail um password to be like is the fgh1 so let's save this for ali and hello ali at gmail so let's go into store manager so as you can see here we were able to enter the store manager uh, controller so we can edit delete our uh, details of uh, our items but if we logged off and register a new user let's say ahmed uh, com, and here let's make like the same one and if we try to enter or i say and if we try to enter store manager it allowed it showed us here we have to log in so we can't enter the store manager until unless we are the user Ali also only so if we want to add uh, Ahmed to also be able to uh, enter the store manager here we just add his uh, email here to be Ahmed at gmail.com and just build this one and if we browse into store manager Ahmed can also edit, delete, or create new items, as you can see here. So that's it for this section. We were able to add validation rules for the user to enter specific values for uh, the fields in the uh, creation or edit um, fields. Uh, and we were able to add authorization for uh, specific users to enter the store manager controller. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you in the next section.